5 a.m. in the morning. Came through high as fuck, and my mama snoring. Tiptoe across the floor, so she's not knowing. Let's go with it. I'm a good editor, so I can figure it out. We're just gonna get the show on the road. And. <laughs> Alrighty guys, welcome to Talking with Tony here, where I go into fighters' houses and I ask them questions Talking right before, <laughs> yeah, right before, right before they eat dinner. And I get to come into Joey Beltran's house because he lives, uh, you know, three doors down. No when pun intended. Eats, so he can come eat dinner with Joey Beltran. I just come for the food and the M and the M and M jar on the back. But obviously, I don't think this guy needs an introduction because he is the two-time and the double champ of BKFC uh, in the heavyweight division. Right? Can you help me out with that intro? Because I, I butchered that. Um, reigning and defending Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship heavyweight champion and the Police Gazette World Diamond Belt World Diamond Belt champion. And, ah, good. Something like that. We both kind of got it. Yeah, either way. Two belts. Nobody gives it. Two belts. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, Joey. So, um, just going to get this out of the way uh, for people because I know a lot of friends and family are watching. Um, you are my uncle and I've, I've had the opportunity to come not just be a part of your journey, but also kind of like see what it's like to be in the, in the shadow of a professional fighter. Um, and that kind of like, you know, not to say in a bad way for myself, but to kind of make a decision on which side of the ring I wanna be you've inspired me to be on the other side of the ring, not in the inside, but on the outside, but instead be a coach. So I want to tell you thank you, because I don't think I've ever, I've, I've ever got to formally tell you thank you in front of you. I think that's something cool that I think a lot of fighters should know, is that, you know, there's, if you're not, what's the saying? If you don't fight, those that don't fight, they teach. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you. I wanted to get in some questions because, well, I thought this would be a good opportunity for people to get to know you. You've done a million interviews. He's done a million interviews, but this is going to be a little bit different because these are questions I've wanted to ask him, but uh, as funny as it sounds, as much as I am related to him, I don't get really time to sit down and ask him unless I sent him a text and then he'd be like, why are you asking me all these questions? <laughs> Probably. Anyways, let's go ahead and get right into it right now. Speaking of food coming around the corner, what is your diet like usually before a fight? Camp. Oh, um, this past... Uh, fight. I I was fortunate enough uh, to to land a, a meal prep sponsor, Guiltless Food. I, they're based in uh, I don't know if they're based in Temecula, but that's where I go and get it, Temecula, Marietta area. And this food was phenomenal. Really made everything quick and easy. Um, and to be brutally honest with you, I like. I'm not gonna lie, like if I don't have like the nice, the good food right there for me, I'm just gonna run through the drive-through and grab a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> That's not always the best, obviously, but you know, I don't know, maybe there's some science behind that because I definitely pre I perform, you know. I don't, I don't definitely don't look the best, but I mean, I'm looking to perform pretty good, so fuck, I guess it's all right. Alberto's the breakfast of champions. But you know, like I know you take your diet seriously though because um, when you started your career, you were, as, um, you were above 300 pounds, right? Yeah, I was 310 when I started, and I had my first professional fight at 285, super heavyweight. What's the lightest you've ever been? 184. <laughs> yeah, 184. You obviously have it under control. It's not like every day you're binge drive through. You no. you make time to make your meals. No, I mean at the end of the day, like I made a conscious decision. Like I'm gonna be heavyweight. I'm gonna enjoy my life. I'm gonna eat, you know, eat do whatever I want and just have a good time and enjoy this last this last little run that, I, that I'm going on. And, um, you know, so far it's going so far so good. So you've had a win in every division. You said you went down to 185. You've had a win in every single heavyweight, light heavyweight, and middleweight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I don't know, when I did it, that was back in 2016, so I don't know, 2015 when I did it. But when I did it, I was the first person in Bellator to have a win in three weight, weight classes. I still don't think they have somebody that's done maybe, that. Maybe, 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 maybe. If Bellator's watching this, or whoever the hell in Bellator's watching this, uh, fact check me, but I think Joey still has it. All right, so here's another one uh, for BKFC or, uh, related. You probably hear things like this a lot. The transition from any combat sport, in fact, any sport to be KFC. What's something you could tell people about it? Because I think that right now, especially in the comments section, people have this idea that BKFC, bare knuckle boxing in general, 
is the sport for washed up athletes, people at the end of their career, or in fact, people that just don't know how to fight because they have a fair chance. Did you, do you think that there is some truth or it's all, they're wrong about it? I think that there's, um, that's silly. That's out of pure ignorance. I mean, regardless, it's like, uh, even if it's an older fighter at the end of the run, like there's still a fucking trained professional fighter that was fighting at the highest level. So yeah, maybe they can't, you know, fucking wrestle and do jiu-jitsu at their best at the highest level anymore, you know, because there's so many moving parts to MMA. That doesn't mean they can't knock you the fuck out and, and ruin your face, you know, and with, with no gloves on. So it's, it's like, you know, that's just the ignorant, uh, you know, it's just an ignorant statement for someone to say that. It's like, oh, they're washed up. Like I said, man, I'll, f I'll f first and foremost admit, like, if I've lost a step over my years, it's just, you know, for bad knees, bad bad joints over the years and years and years of abuse. And, you know, my wrestling scramble is nowhere near what it used to be. And I definitely would not want to be underneath a, a 250 pound motherfucker and try to work my way up. Mm -hmm. But if <laughs> all, you're, all you're allowed to use is your fist, I'm, I'm, I'm down. I'm game. 100%. So would you say the transition from MMA to BKFC was the best transition for you because of what you just said with all those extremities you got to worry about? Was this more it of your was, advantage? It was, it was honestly a case of like, it wasn't like, oh, I couldn't do it anymore because I still went out and competed in Russia and got a win. Um, Against a guy who was on a who was on a good win streak. He's 26 years old. And are we allowed yeah. to talk about that? Of Sorry. Course. Why, um, oh no, I, I, there's another part. Uh, I don't know if, the, if if it was true or not um, that you guys had uh, was Putin there. You guys fought for Putin? No. No. He, he didn't show up. He was supposed to show up, but he didn't show up. Oh, he never showed up. Damn yeah. it. <laughs> you missed a great fight. <laughs> but, so uh, I mean, yeah. so it's like it wasn't. It was. A, it was a case of like how good how how good I felt. Like after about a year, I was like, oh man, I'm in way less pain. I'm like, I'm like living my day to day. My life quality is way better. Like, I'm just like not like, uh, like struggling to like get get it out of my car. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. It's it's fun and like, yeah. That's a sick, twisted way to think about it. It's like, oh yeah, I like this this type of pain better than this pain. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, it's, I mean, at the end of the day, it kind of that it is what it is. It's like you're always everything's gonna hurt to a certain extent. It's just like what hurt do you like better? Mm -hmm. If at all. Would you do your fight career all over? Nah. You like the way it would? It rolled out? Yeah. You know, it's it's just pretty pretty awesome the way it all ended and like um, you know, all I'll those all those years. <laughs> oh, I mean like how it's winding down, winding down. It's all those years and trials and tribulations and like fucking going through how many heartaches and the fucking emotional roller coaster on TV at the highest level. Like, dude, there's a lot of people that like go through all those, I was going through those growing pains, like fucking fighting in the UFC, fucking fighting in Bellator, and like mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to like navigate the world and, and just fucking be a grown up while fighting at the highest level. So <laughs> it was like, now it's like, mm -hmm. chill. It's like, oh, whatever, I gotta fight somebody. It's no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, honestly, it's not a big deal to me yeah. at all. Like people are like, freak out, like, you do better than I'm like, it's so, easy money, it's easy. safe money. It's safe, <laughs> it's safe money. money. <laughs> But you also love it because it it it's something that you. Yeah, found. man. I mean, honestly, like I'm I've always been a little twisted in the head. Like I love I love fighting. This is the fucking most raw, like nastiest form of fighting there is. Is there something you don't like about fighting? It can be anything that you've happened in your career. You're like, goddamn, I hate this. The promoters dealing with promoters. The relationship with promoters. Okay. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, it's just like. But it's just kind of like, uh, it's just kind of, you, you you know what you're signing up for. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're gonna be a professional fighter, you gotta deal with the sleazy promoter. Just the way it is. It's like a boss at a job. Man. Just the way it is. Well, it's probably worse than any boss I've had in a normal job. Oh God, That's okay. Sure. <laughs> well, uh, it's pretty close, I've had a couple of dicks. But it's just like, you know, what can I say? Mm -hmm. I, but at the end of the day, it's like you, I would, I can find, I can just speak from my own, but I can, I'm at peace with it. There's certain things, certain ways that people communicate that I wouldn't have communicate with somebody and I wouldn't fucking beat around the bush and I wouldn't like, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, you know, but it's like, it is just something you got to deal with. It's par for the course, you know, it's part of, part of the, part of the shit you got to deal with. 
you gotta get all to get all that fancy stuff and get on TV under the under the shiny lights and all mm-hmm. that all the fun stuff that comes with it. You gotta deal with some fucking real Whack jobs. pieces. Of sh- <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean that's where having good management comes in, and uh, you know act, they act definitely. Mm-hmm. If the if the if you have a good manager has your back, it can definitely like save you a lot of headaches and heartache for sure. Okay, quick, quick, babe. Can you tell me if it's still recording? I'm gonna be real pissed if it's not. Is the show a clock going? All right, we're good. Okay, just stand right there. You're gonna watch that. It's your job now. What do you do when you're not fighting? When you're not, <laughs> when there's no camp, no schedule, you're just over here. What are you doing? Dude, just fucking worry about when the next fight is. And <laughs> fuck, I, I try to not do it, but it's like we fight. Fought Friday or Saturday, whatever it was, on the <laughs> plane, came back home Sunday night, and like Monday woke up, and I'm like, all right, well, what's next? You know, and honestly, I mean, that's just how I've been, that's how I've been able to like propel myself through years and years and years at a high level of competition and stay somewhat relevant and saying fucking still competitive and to the point where I still, people still pay me thousands of dollars and fly me all over the world to fight. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, Constantly like think, okay, what do I gotta do? What's next? What's next? Who's next? Who's trying to come up? Who, now it's like, okay, who who's trying to come after the belts? Who mm-hmm. wants it? Who wants it? You know. So I, I'm really don't really ever get really out of fight mode, or at least I have it in the last couple of years. And but I mean, be that little have that level of uh, obsession, you know, to if you want to succeed. I think at least just in a weird way, just like never, never, never being satisfied. Like it's I can understand how it could be definitely detrimental to especially like. Um, it's always like always chasing the next, always chasing the next high, always chasing the next fight, the, the next like adrenaline rush, like ah, like mm. what's next, what's next, what's next, and it's like like I said, it's been po- it's been productive in many ways, but you know, I'm I'm but at least my mind like I'm already looking okay, what's gonna be next, what's gonna be next, mm-hmm. and lately like I could start to feel like. The same satisfaction from coaching and cornering people, like, mm-hmm. like, all right, I like this. This is, I can do this. Mm-hmm. In a couple of years, I can do this. Right. Whereas before, like, I was never really willing to put myself in in that much of a coaching role. Like, I taught classes and would teach people, but like, as far as cornering, because I just always had that like, I don't have fucking any any ounce of just like acceptance for like any kind of excuses. I'm always, like. Mm-hmm. You're gonna tell me you're in pain, like you you want to talk about fucking physical pain, motherfucker? Yeah. Why you can't go to practice? Well, that can kind of work though, and in, in, yeah, into yeah. an advantage, like letting people know, because I'm sure people look to you as motivation. So if they're there for you, because for inspiration and leadership, yeah. they they should listen to you because you definitely have walked that walk. Yeah. So I mean, overall, you know, it's all good. Okay. Everything, everything was really good. I liked the way it all all went. Um, how does it feel being a champion though? I mean, it's, I mean, honestly, it's it's nice. It's nice for my fans. It's nice for my family. It's more so for them, to be honest with you. Like me, maybe once again, maybe when I'm older, maybe when it all stops, I'll be like, all right, that was really cool. Like, like winning the t- world title was like such a satisfaction for me to give that as a gift to my family and my friends that have supported me mm-hmm. for 14 years. That's the biggest way I can joy I got out of winning the title. Mm-hmm. It's like, boom, here's the gift. What about the defending part? How'd that feel? Oh yeah, well yeah, it's all encompassed, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was cool. I was, I'm really like, you know, honestly, I'll be I'll be really starting to allow the conversation to, to go in the direction of possibly walking away after the next one, because if I get the winner of Godbeer and Schumacher, I really, really hope Godbeer fucking pulls it off so we can get that whole anticipated fight He's got the British title come over and I beat him and then like, all right, well, it really would have to take a lot of money for me to fight again. And after after your next one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, my original goal was I wanted to defend it. I wanted to defend it uh, five times total and retire as a champion. In many ways, that's still the goal, but it's just like also too logically, I gotta think like, you know, I mean, I look back like that that guy that I fought like, Okay, I've won. I beat his ass. I knocked him out in the fourth round. Okay, like, oh, easy, but, like, boom. I still got, like, big cut on my head. Mm-hmm. And, like, I had a headache for, like, two weeks after. Like, it hurt me to chew food because it hit me in the temple. Mm-hmm. And I was like, 
dude, this is not really worth it, man. Is it yeah. worth it? Like, right now it's not worth it. Right now it's cool that I have the titles, but I mean, financially, it's like, dude, I could make, if I really, really put in my hustle behind my coaching, my training, I could live <laughs> the same comfortable lifestyle that I'm living right now. You know, it's not really, it's not like, oh, I'm balling out of control, like, or I'm not even like balling from the fight money. The fight money is just like, mm -hmm. It's cool, whatever. But Spoiler it's alert, he's not in it for the money. Most <laughs> fighters aren't. And if you are, is that a bad thing? Well, I mean, it's <laughs> like, that's another thing too. It's like, we need to set up proper expectations. I mean, I hear a lot about like, oh, fighters, we need to set up an Ali Act or a union. And I'm, yeah, man, that's very real. But I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. I think more importantly, fighters need to have realistic expectations. What is it they're getting into? Because if you're not Conor McGregor or, or Habib, like nobody else is making those million dollar purses. Yeah, you know, straight up. There was just a fucking article about about how Dustin Poirier made less money <laughs> made less money than Dan Hardy, who's a commentator. So it's like it's outrageous. But I mean, That's it's crazy. like. But at the end of the day, like I said, yeah. If you know you're not in it, if you what if you're in it for something bigger, something deeper, you know, whatever that reason is, it better. Everybody it needs to hold more weight than dollars. Because there's not that much money out here. Or you know, there is, they're hiding it from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, let me ask you, uh, we're going to get into some less fight questions. Who's your favorite UFC fighter? Nick Diaz. Nick Diaz? Your favorite boxer? Who this is her childhood? Favorite BKFC fighter? Joey Belcher. No. <laughs> Joey Belcher. <laughs> I knew I I should have put it here. He, he's going to... He's gonna say myself. Okay, let's no. say let's say let's say you retired. Who would be somebody you'd be looking forward Nobody to watch come up Nobody. right now oh. in the sport? Who would you watch? Who would be excited to watch Nobody. for their future in BKFC? That be that. that oh yeah. yeah. That and win. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. Uh, people don't know this, but you're you have, you're an obsessed wrestler fan. Like you watch it religiously, pretty religiously. Uh, I, not as you used to. I know. Not much sure. as I used to, but I definitely like keep keep an eye on things that's happening. Who's your favorite wrestler? Top what? three favorites. Oh. Doesn't matter. No, no particular order. Just name out three. Oh, cool. Nash and Hall and uh, Stone Cold. Well, I don't know, man. It's like, like fucking redo that order. Like, Hold on. That's <laughs> how you know he's the outsiders, the outsiders, the outsiders for sure. Like the outsiders when they had their run, they were so fucking. They were so funny. Good performers in the rings. Good sort like all that. You know, I, I thought they were really funny. Um, I would say I'll go out on the limb and say Stone Cold and Nash and Hall. Favorite three TV shows to watch? Always Sunny. It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Chappelle Show. Oh, does he have a new one? Older now? No, it just came back. They re-released it on Netflix. So both don't matter. You just like Chappelle yeah, Show. Yeah, and uh, Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. I think you kind of went over it already, but what are your retirement plans post-fighting? You kind of talked about it. Was that the coaching thing? You think you want to start sharing your knowledge of the world to the world? I mean, we'll see. We'll see if you can... But that's another thing too. Proper expectations that I know for very you no know, fucking money and coaching fighters. And there's always like awkward conversations. You got, that's why I always make it a point. Like, dude, I'm I get home with my purse. I fucking within a day or two, I'm paid. Pay my coaches and we're done. Mm -hmm. There's no awkward like I like. Um, oh, you got that money? <laughs> like, so then for aspiring fighters, people that want to make pro, you, you you've said it before, having realistic expectations. With that being said, you know, what are some things that you, you I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of things because there'd be a laundry list, but some like advice you'd give to people that are trying to be fighters. Like they're not even amateurs. Maybe, say they're, maybe they're even doing smokers right now. And they like, they tell you like, oh, I want to be a professional, Joey. They come to you. How does that, how does that conversation come down? Um, I mean, honestly, man, I, I like, it really it takes, it takes a long time for me to even really like, I'll like you as a person, I'll talk to you as a person, but as far as like giving too much of myself because I'm selfish. I'm selfish. I'm very fucking selfish. There's nothing person. wrong with there's nothing wrong with that. But I mean, like, yeah. like I said, I'm selfish and I'm obsessed with fucking winning, I'm obsessed with getting better, obsessed with like or keeping these little belts I have and all that stuff. But so it's like fighters, it's like I'll meet you halfway, you know, as far as like the effort you put. But if I was to put like you have to have uh Full commitment, like no plan B. Mm -hmm. If this is really what you want, it's not, there's gonna be, it's a life. It's a life. And you're gonna have to know, you're gonna have to be able to win. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to be able to lose three in a row and be like, no, like quitting is not an option. 
Right. Quitting is not an option. This is my life. This is, which is what I'm called to do. Mm -hmm. And and be willing to go through those rough times and, and you know right the ship and continue continue pressing forward. So I mean, honestly, I would if like if you're okay with that and you're ready, you're really ready to do that and make full commitment. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you'll be able to make it to the top. Um, or the top levels, I mean. Right. And, the, and but it's also too. It's, I don't mean I don't want to say that to discourage people because there's so many different journeys you can go through in personal growth. You can go to like you can just fight smokers and just have the time of your life and just full and, and continue continually improve as a martial artist and, and physically and get in better shape and getting stronger and faster and all that shit. So it's like I'm not gonna tell you oh because you never made it to a big show like your journey was dog shit. I'm I'm just saying like. You have to once again come up. What is it that you want out of this? Mm -hmm. Like, do you really want? Are you really about that life? Mm -hmm. do you really want this to be your livelihood? And then, like, just be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, just honesty with yourself. And on the technical side of things, like once you start making money, get an accountant, get an accountant, and pay your taxes, and uh, reach pay, out to pay estimated taxes. Don't oh. fucking wait till the end of the year because you're never gonna pay it at the end of the year. <laughs> Okay. You're gonna see the big giant sum and you're be like, alright, put me on the painting plan. Oh, look at the food is here. Hold on. Excuse me, we're in the middle of the interview. It's okay. No, this looks good. Uh, just be careful, you're not looking at But are, are sponsors important? Well, dude, it's like sponsors is such a it's such a different place and time right now. And it's like, oh, yeah, it was a, like back in the glory days when you get like $20,000 wearing a t shirt and stuff like that. Those days are gone. Those days are oh. long gone. Especially with the Reebok contract, and everyone says like, "Oh, I'm automatically, oh, go to Bellator and make more money." Oh, like, will you? Really? All You've right, been there. maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe. But um, you know, it's like, it's just really, fuck, oh, man. It's like, if I could go back and do anything different, it's not about the fights and the trials and tribulations. It'd be like managing my money, doing simple things like simple budgets, mm -hmm. and just sticking to it. Okay. No, the internet. It's okay. Yeah. No. Let it, ooh. Ooh. Wow. Can you show the camera that thing real quick? Before Can I get some mail? It's right there. Oh. What is this? A Bogu get burger? <laughs> what is this red stuff? It's the tomato jam. Tomato oh. jam. The tomato onion. With an when over medium egg. Wrap it up. Last question to ask you uh, as you're taking a bite into this delicious sandwich. If you could be a video game character, which video char game character would best represent you? E Honda. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he the, the, the sumo guy? Oh, hold on real quick. What are you talking about? You don't know that? No, what? E Honda. He's got an E Honda tattoo. I did not know. That. I do not know that. Oh, watch the, watch the mic, watch the mic. For those that don't, for the, for those that don't think he does, he has E Honda tattooed on his arm. Thanks again, Joey, for doing the interview for me. I've been uh, trying to schedule this, but it was more my time than it was yours because I know you got time at the end of the day. Is there anything that you'd like to tell people that might see this, you know, before we head out? Any, any funny or maybe even important messages? Um, funny story. Tony, so, Anthony, He's 18 years old. Me? Yeah. Okay. His mom, my sister, called me frantic. You need to talk to your nephew. He says he wants to drop out of college and he wants to be a pro fighter. He's gonna train, you're gonna train him. I'm like, oh, all right. All right, I'll talk to him. And I did not like talk to him and try to talk him out of it. I was like, oh, okay. You're on spring break, right? So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, cool. You're gonna come to Alliance with me. So then we walk into Alliance on a, on a sparring day, it's a Tuesday on the Did you Tuesday. Sparring day at Alliance. Okay. And I walk in. Tony wants to hear this in my Get this lady out of here. Um, and uh, I walk in, I was like, hey. And everyone's warming up, putting their hand wraps on. I was like, hey. This is my nephew right here. Take care of him. Take, treat him like family. Oh yeah. Anybody drops him, two hundred dollars. Dead serious. Two hundred dollars. Anybody knocks him out. <laughs> and that started his week at Alliance, or his 
two weeks because we're on spring break. And he did good. Nobody got the money. He more than survived by the end of the week, was doing really good competing with like high level pros. I remember Eric Uresk, like judo tossing him across the room. It was hilarious. Like Danny Martinez trying to take his head off. And, and that was a good week. After that week, I think we decided that we we're going to be a coach. <laughs> oh, that's the, I even remember too, Dominic Cruz, he beat the shit out of me with with one arm. <laughs> uh, that was the the fight after I think he broke his wrist off Uri Faber. Something like that, yeah. Uh, he, and Dom was like, don't worry, little guy. You'll be all right. <laughs> he did a good job. I don't know if, Dom, if Dominic Cruz sees this. I don't know if you remember me, but I was that guy. That was me. Cool, fun story. Thanks, Joey. Hopefully we uh, do something like this again and it's after you've defended your belt and uh, we can talk rocking chair re retirement stories after that. Hey, bring another burger. <laughs> bring another burger. Do we have any more? Ironically, after that, I couldn't have seen clearer. I saw that I was becoming.